Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Explorer Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue, black, and green or Sultai colored self mill deck, sometimes also referred to as Dredgeless Dredge, as the deck features a lot of the same graveyard payoff cards that you might see in a Dredge deck in older formats, but of course we lack those same Dredge enablers that are used to put a lot of cards in our graveyard in the first place. So I've split up the deck into three categories. We've got our self mill enablers, the miscellaneous section, and then our payoff cards for milling a lot of cards into our graveyard. And those include Narcomiba, a 2-mana 1-1 one, one flyer, that when it's put into our graveyard from our library, we may put it onto the battlefield instead. And Narcomiba pairs quite nicely with Price Amalgam, a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three zombie, saying whenever a creature enters a battlefield, if it entered from our graveyard or we cast it from our graveyard, we get to return the Amalgam from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped at the beginning of the next end step. So if we happen to mill both Narcomiba and Amalgam, we immediately get to return Narcomiba to the battlefield, and then at the beginning of our next end step we also get to return all the Amalgams that are in our graveyard, since Narcomiba helped enable it. And then we also have four copies of Creeping Chill, can be cast as a 4-mana sorcery to deal 3 damage to the opponent and we gain 3, but instead we're often going to cast it for free whenever we mill it by exiling it in the process. And then Creeping Chill can also help enable our Silver Smote Ghoul, which is our final card that we're trying to get back from the graveyard for free. A 3-mana three 3-1 three Zombie Vampire, saying at the beginning of our end step, if we gained 3 or more life this turn, we can return the Ghoul from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Can also sacrifice it for 1 on a black to draw card, which can maybe come up in the late game if we have a lot of mana, and we cast a Creeping Chill and have the spare mana to sacrifice a Ghoul that's already in play, then we can return it for free end of turn anyways, so we might as well draw an extra card in the process. So there's a pretty important distinction between Ghoul and Amalgam, since Ghoul only works at the beginning of our end step, whereas the Amalgam can also potentially return at the beginning of the opponent's end step, and that's the reason why we often need to cast some of our instants in our own turn at sorcery speed, like our Gaze and Grizzly Salvage, that way if we happen to mill both Ghoul and Creeping Chill, we'll still be able to return the Ghoul end of turn, whereas that would not work if it happens during the opponent's turn. And then the next important category are the self-mill enablers, and we typically only want to keep hands with at least two enablers and the lands to cast them, otherwise we don't get to set up our graveyard synergies in the first place. And those enablers include Gaze, a 1-mana instant that lets us surveil 3, so we can potentially put all 3 cards from the top of our deck into our graveyard, and that can enable some of our synergies. can also keep some cards on top if we find another important enabler along the way, or we just need to hit our land drops for instance. And then we can also flash it back for 1 on a blue, so if we happen to mill it with a different card we can still get some value from it. Then there's Stitcher Supplier, a 1-1 that mills 3 when it enters or dies, so chumping with the supplier can also provide more value. And then there's Seder Wayfinder, a 1-1 that will mill the top 4 cards to potentially find a land that we can put into our hand. We have a relatively low land count, although we would still like to get to 3 or 4 mana, so the Wayfinder is perfect for that. And then there's Salvage, which lets us take a look at the top 5 cards of our library, so it digs a little bit deeper than Wayfinder, and we can keep both a creature or a land and put it into our hand, so it has a bit more utility than the Wayfinder, but of course does not give us a 1-1 creature, which will be quite useful if we're trying to set up our Driven to Despair. So Driven is a sorcery that we can cast for 1 and a green from our hand, saying until end of turn, creatures we control gain Trample, and when this creature deals damage to the opponent, we get to draw a card, and then we can also cast Despair from our graveyard, thanks to Aftermath, which could happen in the same turn we cast a Driven Half, or we can simply cast Despair by itself if we happened to mill it. And that says, until end of turn, creatures we control gain Menace, and whenever this creature deals damage to the opponent, that player discards a card. So getting to cast a Driven and Despair if we have a bunch of random creatures in play can be quite effective, potentially emptying the opponent's hand while drawing a few cards in the process. And then we also have three copies of Haunted Dead, which we often want to have in our graveyard, so we can use the one on a black ability to discard two cards and return Haunted Dead from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped, where it's also joined by a 1-1 spirit token that will enter untapped. And by returning Haunted Dead, we also enable our prized amalgam, so we could potentially have two copies of prized amalgam in hand that we both can discard with our Haunted Dead, and then end of turn we get to return both of those amalgams in addition to the 2-2 and the 1-1 flyer. And then we can also cast a Haunted Dead for 4 mana, but that's not our main plan. And then a recent addition, Jace the Perfected Mind also joins the deck. 
A 4 mana Planeswalker can be cast for 3 mana and 2 life as well, but we often want to wait to cast it for 4 mana in this deck so we have more loyalty when it enters the battlefield, so we can use a minus X ability for the max amount to mill 3 times X cards, so that can potentially put 15 cards in the graveyard all at once, which will likely find some of our self-mill synergies here to take over the game. Then we can also use a plus one to shrink opposing creatures down, and the minus two can also be very relevant. If we have 20 or more cards in our graveyard, we can potentially draw three in addition to milling three cards with a minus two. And then our mana base is pretty straightforward, all dual lands as you can see, including all 12 of the fast lands, including the new Dark Slick Shores, which has been a nice addition for the deck, since we want all our lands to make two colors, so we can potentially curve Gaze into Grizzly Salvage, which would not really work if we have a lot of lands that only produce one color. And then to round things out, we have some Shock Lands as well, with a full set of Watery Grave, since that gives us access to both Gaze and Supplier on turn one, and then two Overgrown Tomb, two Breeding Pool, and then of course we also have Wayfinder and Salvage to help hit or land drops. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, hand seems keepable. Plenty of enablers, two lands, and then salvage and uh, wayfinder can help find even more. Up against Gigantha as companion. Not the most exciting mill with supplier. Hopefully our next ones are better. And it looks like a red-white heroic deck. Could jump now with Supplier, could wait and soak up more damage in future turns. Even though milling is of course quite nice here. So play Wayfinder. Can maybe still find a check land for next turn. Did mill Narcomoeba, Haunted Dead, although no prized amalgams in hand or in the graveyard. So sure, we'll keep Supplier back. There's a chance I want to jump with it next turn. Still more likely to salvage and then wait on a 4 mana Jace. No attacks. Okay, so salvage, have to kind of do it main phase here in case we mill Creeping Chill and Ghoul. And uh, I'll grab a Stitcher Supplier, which we can still play. Double Narcomoeba, Amalgam, those are nice. And we can play Stitcher Supplier. And we'll hit for one in the air. Okay. Do we have any ghouls to get back if we hard cast Creeping Chill? We do not. So yeah, the plan is to Jace. And then Pwn's definitely gonna have some instants here. So I could just Chump with the Supplier now, I could spread out our uh, Chump blocks a little bit. And then just throw in front of Legionnaire. And then keep the other Supplier for next turn. And if they don't play any pump spells, that's fine by me. Virtuoso, so we're gonna move all in on the Virtuoso most likely. Have the option of discarding Amalgam to Haunted Dead. Or we can just uh, Jace Mill for 15, which I kind of prefer here. And then see what we hit before deciding our attacks. The weak will be educated in Could also shrink down Virtuoso as an alternative, but... Alright, we hit Creeping Chill, and I saw plenty of... Silver Smote Ghouls as well. So Narcomoeba attacks. Amalgam can attack. The rest stays back. And we've got a nice split of different colors here in case of a God's Willing on Virtuoso. So it's mostly Trample that we're worried about. But with only two lands, they're unlikely to be able to play too many spells to pump up the Virtuoso. And then next turn with Despair, we can empty out their hands and give the team Menace. So we should be pretty much in the clear. Just gotta be careful we don't die to a Virtuoso, so that's definitely getting chumped. Could put one in front of each creature, or put everything in front of Virtuoso, since that's the way we most likely lose if they pump it up a few times and give it Trample. Don't think it matters too much. Alright, Pwn's gonna move in on the Legionnaire.
double gaunt's willing. Group show is so down, still a 10, and our opponent explodes. Yeah, knowing we can attack for lethal next turn in addition to emptying their hand onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got all the cards in hand that we want in our graveyard, only one enabler, so let's take a mulligan. Yeah, this seems better. We have two enablers at least, and then I'll keep the Amalgam in hand since we can maybe discard it if we mill Haunted Dead, whereas Narcomiba's a lot less impressive when hard cast. So turn one Supplier, turn two Grizzly Salvage. Up against a red deck. Alright, not the uh, most exciting cards milled, but at least Gaze can be flashed back. Put in blue-red. And uh, normally I would want to main phase my spells in case we mill Silver Smote Ghoul plus a potential Creeping Chill. If they keep up counter spell mana, it could be better to wait. Maybe set up a flashback Gaze. Right, pieces of the puzzle. So a Phoenix deck, and they mill the Phoenix. Opponent grabs the card draw spells. So let's gaze now, and then salvage in my turn, perhaps. And so yeah, I'm happy to put Haunted Dead in the graveyard. Can keep Jace for self-milling purposes. And then the play here might be to just discard Amalgam to Haunted Dead and get it back and hit for one and then I'm still probably better off playing uh, fast lands since those will come into play tapped later so I'm likely to get back double phoenix this turn so the pressure is on Could jump a phoenix with a 1-1 token, might be better off saving it in case of a Driven to Despair. And then discard Amalgam and a land. Take 6. Get back Amalgam, and there's our Driven to Despair. So I could draw 4, make the opponent discard 4. That seems powerful. We'll take a hit on the way back, but then we can hopefully pull ahead with all the card advantage. Oh, another Phoenix discarded, that's of course the risk. So they still have three cards in hand. We'll have to do some damage control next turn. Hoping to mill Creeping Chill to gain some life back. Thing in the ice, also scary. And an impulse kills Amalgam. Your opponent only cast two spells here, so no third Phoenix. Okay, so Jace can mill myself. There's no 20 cards in Graveyard at the moment. So maybe I'm better off going Salvage, Supplier, and Gaze. So we'll start with a Salvage. And this one can pick up a land. Lot supplier. Double ghoul, so really hoping for a creeping chill here. And there it is, alongside Narcomiba. Amalgam comes back as well. 
And then do we have any great attacks? Not really, I guess if we attack like so, opponent can block supplier to mill for three. Keep the spirit back to block. Opponent takes the trade. Okay, play a tapped check land. And get back double ghoul, double amalgam. So we're pretty far ahead, so unless our opponent can cast three spells, maybe a finale, getting back to instances and sorceries could do it. Consider to kick things off. That's scary. So two more instances and sorceries and thing transforms. There's an opt. Oh no. Are they gonna get there? And yeah, fiery impulse. So thing transforms. And uh, yeah, double Phoenix returns. That's unfortunate. GG's. Could have potentially left myself with two mana to make a 1 1 token with Haunted Dead to then chump the Awoken Horror and then discard double Amalgam in the process, but wasn't really expecting the opponent to cast three spells with only one card in hand and a top deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hands got one enabler. Don't think we keep that one. This is a little bit better. Two lands, can gaze to help hit my land drops, or we can just supply our turn one and then keep the gaze for next turn. Upside of gaze is that it can maybe find a two drop for turn two, although we hit the jackpot here, Narcomoeba plus an amalgam. So not bad for turn one here. And then now we'll gaze Try and set up our third land. And we mill double Narcomy by Creeping Chill. So that's another great mill. Twins at 12. Got a bunch of 1 1 flyers. 3 3 Amalgam in play, and our opponent concedes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems keepable. Wayfinder likely to find a black mana for salvage, and then we'll be able to maybe cast a four mana Jace. Also reasonable to play Sanctum in case we find another fast land early on, so we can play this on turn four for Jace. Opponent also a graveyard deck with Gaze as our first play, so we'll see what variety of uh, graveyard deck our opponent's on. Grixis, Scholars. Hoping to find a black source, and we sure did. So next turn I could salvage and gaze in the same turn. And then wait to set up our 4 mana Jace. Okay, founding. So, can also mill themselves. It's gonna be a secret keeper. See Mutt as well, Ghoul. So our opponent's playing a lot of the same cards. For now, let's uh, salvage main phase and hit a supplier, and then we can still gaze. And if we mill a ghoul, we'll be able to get it back. Narcomoeba I'll take, and then do we want a Wayfinder? Wayfinder I could play alongside supplier, but we already have one in hand. Since uh, Marsh comes into play tapped, so we wouldn't be able to play 4 mana Jace yet. So everything in the bin. Get back Narcomoeba. Attack for one. And then that's it for now. No ghouls, no prized amalgams to get back. Speaking of prized amalgam. So the red seems to be for scrap work, Mutt. Doing a similar job to Haunted Dead as kind of a discard outlet. Another founding. Could also potentially use Jace to just mill the opponent here if they're low enough, but still at 40, so don't want to enable their graveyard synergies. And uh, saw Sovereign's Bites get back a ghoul. Alright, so stick to the plan, I guess. Wayfinder plus Stitcher Supplier.
found a creeping chill, hope to mill some ghouls. Another gaze instead. So, not the best set of uh, mills so far. But at least we're developing our mana, whereas the opponent stuck on two. Could set up a Driven to Despair at some point as well. Although it's unclear whether it's beneficial to make the opponent discard. Their so opponent gazes another Creeping Chill. So don't really want to trade for Ghoul since they'll be able to get it back this turn. And another Creeping Chill. So definitely a strange matchup. Opponent's got 32 cards remaining. Unearths a scrapwork mutt. Maybe discarding another ghoul or an ox. It's pretty good to escape. Attacks all out, hits me for eight. Could just jump with a supplier. And then doesn't really matter what we jump out of the three part creatures since they'll be able to get the ghoul back. Build a few lands. Supplier of the draw. So yeah, Driven to Despair is an option. And hope not to mill too many price amalgams. But given that they had the chance to discard last turn with the Mutts, and decided to discard the Ox, they probably don't have too many of those payoffs left. So Narcomiba, Mutts, and Secret Keeper. Okay. Picked up a Creeping Chill ourselves. So our opponent can hit us for six. Now we'll see if they end up milling a few more cards, because we're getting close to potentially a Lethal Jace. Jace could also just draw three here with a minus two. So our opponent looking to escape the Ox, which will draw three when it enters. So 27 cards left. So we would need double Jace to mill them out. And milling them for 15 has some serious consequences, like finding additional ghouls and amalgams. Right, it's gonna be mutts. To get in for 8 total, down to 4. Discard it another ghoul. So 26 cards remain. Alright, might still be better off milling myself for 15 at this point. Can play Supplier too. Maybe start there. We have 23 cards left, so... Still have a lot of ghouls left to find. Could also keep Jace alive and it's only do X equals 3 or 4. But uh, let's go all out. Alright, double Narcomiba comes back. And triple Prize Amalgam. And then next turn we can hardcast Creeping Chill to get back our ghouls. Narcomiba hits for 1. And get back our amalgams. Can still use despair to give menace to our team. Potentially cross the finish line. It's an important turn coming up. Secret Keeper mill for four. Okay. Opponent could have put us to one card in library. So glad they didn't. Gaze is gonna keep self milling. There's another ghoul. And a mutts. Discard amalgam. Alright, think we're in the clear. Just a mutts attacking us. Don't necessarily want to block with suppliers, since then we're not gonna have many cards left. 
Zero points got four blockers. Can give the team menace. And rain for three. Zero points at a virtual seven life. So I may be able to even take the damage here. Alright, that forces a block. So let's say a block like so. Take two down to two. So flashback despair. Attack all out. And cast creeping chill. Opponent can double block an amalgam. And then still take lethal so we don't even need the creeping chill here. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And as far as hands that are light on early enablers go, this one's actually not bad since we can gaze on one and on two. If I mill Haunted Dead, I can discard double amalgam and get them both back. And then Jace can also do some heavy lifting. So it seems worth a shot. And then a card we most want to put in the graveyards is probably Haunted Dead. Okay, turn one Renegade. As we find another Gaze. So I should probably Gaze now in case I mill Creeping Chill alongside a uh, copy of the Silver Smoke Ghoul. Did find our Haunted Dead at least, so that's nice. And then I don't think we need to keep additional lands. So turn two, discard two Amalgams to the Haunted Dead. Can also do it in the opponent's turn now. And that's a lot of Death Touch creatures, so expecting some Death Touch payoffs soon. Make sure to do this in the opponent's second main phase, as opposed to the end step. Otherwise we won't get our Amalgams back until the next turn. So the Spirit Token can potentially ambush the Vampire of Dire Moon. So we'll do this now. Discard Double Amalgam. And block the Vampire. And Amalgam is going to be excellent in this type of creature matchup. Can trade off and so we can easily get it back later. Alright, it's going to be a Wrecker next. And another Vampire. So expecting the opponent to have cards like Finn to try and poison us to death. They could have the one for Death Touch Snake as well. Okay, so this turn maybe cast and flashback Gaze. And then wait on Jace to maybe play it for 4 mana. See what else we can find in the meantime. Another Gaze can go, could keep Watery Grave on top, although we're somewhat likely to find more lands with a flashback Gaze. And again, forced to main phases because of Ghoul only coming back in our turn. Okay, found a Ghoul, did not find a way to bring it back right now, but I'll keep the Breathing Pool on top. And then next turn I can play 4 mana Jace and start milling, and then I'm fine to keep everyone back. Alright, Poe going for it. So unless they have a way to make the team indestructible, should be fine to just block everyone. Trades happen. And then Jace Mill for 15 is likely to find us a way to get back all our amalgams. As opposed to just going for Haunted Dead. And then the next Jace could maybe draw 3 with a minus 2 as well. Okay, found Narcomoeba and Creeping Chill, so that we'll get back all our creatures, Ghoul and Prize Amalgam. And then if the opponent has any cards left in hand, we can make them discard with Despair. Okay, not bad. Three Amalgams, two Ghouls. We have 26 cards remaining. Put 
opponent attacks, sure we'll trade. And a safekeeping is what they had. And our opponent explodes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's a little slow to get going without any one mana plays, but Salvage likely hits our third land, and then we can uh, potentially play back to back Jace to mill ourselves. Amalgam could be good if we put a Haunted Dead in the graveyard to discard. Put onto red green. And a Beast Caller. Okay, can Blooming Marsh now. And then I should salvage main phase in case we mill Creeping Chill and Ghoul at the same time. And then Wayfinder might be better than a land. As another enabler that can soak up some damage. Elvish Mystic, Gross Beast Caller. And another one. Yeah, let's play the Wayfinder as opposed to Grizzly Salvage. See what land we get. And then next turn maybe play 4 mana Jace. Did not hit a land sadly, but at least mill the Creeping Chill. And then Amalgam will eventually be able to get back too. So we'll go with the tab Breeding Pool. And then next turn I'll have to decide if I want to play a 3 mana Jace. Or maybe salvage, hit a land, and then I could still gaze if it's untapped. Raichu's gonna hit pretty hard. So do I chump right now, or do we wait and maybe chump next turn? Yeah, let's wait a turn. Found a land, but it's tapped. So, in that case, let's salvage. And found an Archimeba. Can grab an untapped land, even if it costs me some life. Might be worth it. An Archimeba gets back our price amalgam. And then we're hoping to find some more with a gaze here. And double Narcomy was not bad. Alright, so we've got a few blockers now to buy time. And then next turn I can set up a big Jace. Alright, so got one Amalgam back. Hoping for more Creeping Chills and Silver Smote Ghouls next turn. Partners is quite good. I ride you up to a 6-6. Six, six. And the Mystics are considering an attack as well, but they stay back. I ride you counter on partners. So yeah, that's gonna distribute three counters next turn. Definitely have to chump. There's one ghoul, but no haunted dead to discard it. So I think Jace mill for the max amount is our best bet. 13 cards in graveyard. Could also use a plus one to shrink down partners, but we still need to deal with the Raiju and everything else. So just gotta get a bit lucky here. And then a couple of creeping chills and a ghoul go a long way. Alright, double Creeping Chill and another Narcomiba. I saw at least a Ghoul in there too. Can't attack into the Reaching Partners. Okay, 
So we'll just pass it back. And then one ghoul is coming back. So we still have two left in the deck. And one creeping chill. We have a despair, so that can potentially give our team menace. If we want to attack back. Harden scales make sense. Lots of plus one counters going around. Time to grow Elvish Mystic. So we'll take a bunch of damage from Raiju, which can put counters on the Mystic. Alright, they're gonna keep something back. So we're at seven. So yeah, these are probably all chum blocks. Could maybe take three from partners. And then next turn, if I despair for Menace, I can connect for six. But then I would still need to mill my last Creeping Chill, which we only get to mill nine cards, so nine out of 16. I guess we are favorites. And that's assuming there's no removal here for the Ghoul or an additional blocker would also get in the way. Okay, so... Yeah, I think it's just gonna be... Despair, attack for 6, and then mill with Jace for 9. So let's go for it. Despair. Hope there's no removal here. Okay, point is at three. I guess if I take two of Jace, I still die to an opposing stomp as well, but we're about to make them discard, so they'll have to show it first. Alright, Tyvar stand making Mystic indestructible, that's fine. Nine cards to find one Creeping Chill. Let's go. And we didn't get there. That's too bad. Alright, GG's. So there's a Creeping Chill in the remaining six here. Couldn't quite get there. But we put ourselves in a position to win the game. Alright, so on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. What do we think of our hands? Triple Gaze. It is a good enabler, although we can't even cast two of them on turn two, since we only have the one blue source. Unless I gaze and then keep a blue source on top, and then I can double gaze on two. Maybe that's good enough. Opponents, an energy deck with turn one a tune. There's some white mana too. So I should gaze now in case we mill Creeping Chill and Ghoul. And then I can keep a Supplier and a Sanctum as well. Although keeping both is counterproductive, so I have to decide if I want to double gaze or Supplier plus gaze. I guess gaze is just fine here. Don't need Supplier. Opponent setting up their energy for a potential Aetherworks Marvel. And there's one Amalgam. Probably fine to put everything in Graveyard to dig a bit deeper. No his flashback, a Gaze. And a Ghoul, so no Creeping Chill, sadly. And, uh, yeah. Put everything in Graveyard still, or do we want to keep a Wayfinder? Don't really need more lands, and again, we can just flashback Gaze next. And can do it in upkeep. Okay, can keep a supplier or salvage, but supplier at least I can cast right now. And then we're hoping for creeping chill, maybe Narcomiba. 
Okay, there's Narcomoeba to get back Price Amalgam. So we're finally on the board. All their opponents is gonna get to potentially spin the wheel on an Aetherworks Marvel. Alright, no Marvel yet. So, can salvage now as opposed to gaze. And with an untapped land we can do both. Okay, found our untapped land. Could also haunt a dead. I think I prefer another gaze. Try and mill a creeping chill. And do it now because of ghoul. Another amalgam instead. So we're halfway through our library. Not the most impressive board state, but we have amalgam and ghoul still in the graveyard. Supreme Verdicts makes sense, or point to more controlling energy build. But to actually set up our synergies here, Narcomoeba gets back double amalgam. So we actually have more pressure than we had before. And that's the strength of this type of deck against control. So hit for 7, and then probably just cast a ghoul. And then if our opponent wipes the board again, I can Creeping Chill to get back double ghoul. And with their opponent at 14, they're pretty close to death to a Creeping Chill and an all-out attack. They've got all the energy in the world. And a Driven to Despair could be excellent too. Let's see if this resolves. Gotta watch out for Cellular Vankage, I suppose, but... Alright, get to connect. Opponent discards 4, we draw 4. Emrakul in hand makes sense. And a bunch of land. Alright, and we still get to play Wayfinder. Or we can set up Haunted Dead end of turn. Haunted Dead. Can get back Amalgam in case of a top deck sweeper. That's probably safer. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand does not have any enablers whatsoever, so that's an easy mulligan. This is better. And then I'll keep the Amalgam, since we can discard it to Haunted Dead. And then Supplier into Salvage is a good start. Turn on Thoughtseize. Might take Salvage. Okay. Turn on Supplier. And then... Probably turn 3 Jace. Alright, found a Haunted Dead, so that's a nice turn 2 play. Even a Gaze as well. Opponent's got their own Supplier. Looks like a self mill deck as well. Opponent found a Creeping Chill. So, can simply pass a turn. Can attack for 1, I suppose, since opponent kept cards on top, which they presumably don't want to mill, but who knows. Thought sees Jace Narcomoeba. And we'll see what we mill with Supplier. So, no real reason to activate Haunted Dead right now. Can wait until the opponent's end of second main. Hardcast Ghoul. And we'll discard Amalgam and a land. Get back Amalgam. Alright, and then can cast a Driven half of Driven to Despair or just Despair to make them discard. And then wait on Driven. Sure. Get a nice attack in. 
your point will be empty handed. A land and stitcher supply are discarded. Opponent is at 10, so they'll have to keep blockers back. But we can trample our team with Driven, with another untapped land, both Trample and Menace. And then a quick graveyard check, 11 and 6, so Jace is still not quite drawing 3. So now I'm liking Driven, and then we can Gaze as well, but we'll see what we draw first. And our opponent explodes, awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand's not amazing, just have the one enabler and a few too many payoffs in hand. This is better. Can keep three lands, three enablers, and then a ghoul can go to the bottom. So turn one supplier, turn two wayfinder, maybe turn three jace. Well, let's see what we get to mill. An Archimiba. And then Wayfinder versus Gaze on two. Probably better to Wayfinder. Gives us an extra creature to set up our aftermath potentially. Turn one scamp. Okay. Let's Wayfinder. And then I'll put an upkeep stop to potentially Gaze before drawing. And we milled Narcomoeba and Prize Amalgam. So that's nice. Fine to attack with both. Opponent takes it, so Scamp might be part of a Hammer combo deck with a new Sigardos aid. At least we've got plenty of Chum Blockers. A Monoret so far. And there's a Hammer, so... And they just need a way to equip the Scamp. They might have some Fling effects in their deck as well. So, to Gaze or not to Gaze. I think we do wait on a 4-mana Jace to mill for 15. Just gaze now, see if we can find a 1-mana enabler. And uh, I'll keep a salvage, I think. And then we need to make sure to keep a couple of blockers back at least. Maybe leave back Stitcher Supplier. And Wayfinder. In case a Spike Field Hazard kill one of them. And then can play Blooming Marsh. And next turn, Jace. Probably just minus 5 right away. Could also potentially plus it on the Scamp. To shrink it down, make it less effective. Opponent had the crash through, so that tramples the Scamp. Although Snarl comes into play tapped, so they couldn't necessarily equip. And then now they wouldn't necessarily have the trample anymore. So yeah, Jace shrink down Scamp is an option, but the more fun option is to just minus all the way. Plans are already in motion. And see what we can mill. Double Creeping Chill, Narcomoeba. And double Amalgam coming back. And then we might have some Silver Smotes also returning. So if I attack all out, our opponent's forced to block. And our opponent's just gonna take it. Can have a look here. Did we have any silver smotes coming back? I guess no silver smote, but double amalgam was gonna be good enough. Alright, so we get to see our Sultai self mill graveyard deck in action. And yeah, overall, might not be the most competitive deck out there since it takes a while to get going. But in certain matchups, especially against control that doesn't have a lot of exile effects, and against mid range decks with a lot of hand disruption, we can usually operate quite well since we can simply get cards back from the graveyard over and over. So we don't really mind if our creatures die a few times. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.